usually when I do um, concerts, you get to hear all of the stories behind the songs. But it isn't very often that we get to just kind of talk to each other and have a conversation and get to know each other. And so that's why I like to do these messages on Sunday morning. It's my chance to kind of share with you something I've learned. And the last time I was here, I shared with you a lesson that I learned in courage. And that was illustrated by the first man to cross Niagara Falls on a tightrope. And this morning, I get to share with you something that I learned about recognizing the goodness of God and how important our perspective is and our attitude is um, and just our willingness to see that goodness. And I think that, you know, while I, I think we always, we all know that our thoughts are creative or our attitude and, um, you know, just the, the way that we experience thing or things or approach certain um, things that hit us in our lives makes such a difference in, in how we're going to walk away with it um, or the lessons that we're going to learn. But sometimes if we run into an experience or a conversation, it makes such a difference in how how that message gets brought home to me. And so I'm going to tell you this, this lesson that I learned in goodness and perspective through this story um, that I call the parable of the Yorkies. And it was because of a conversation that I had with my mom um, when I was on a hike and she called to tell me uh, that one of her dogs had died. And it this particular conversation happened not long after I released my Every Day album. And I had just written this song called Every Day that was this, really this listing about, this listing of goodness and the, and the wonderful things that we can see around us every day. So I'm gonna sing this song for you first and um, just kind of tell you how it weaves into this lesson. <laughs> Tiny drops of water Bouncing on my roof Drumming out a song of love Pounding out the truth You send them to remind me One for every blessing on me And oh, they keep coming oh, Every day your goodness finds me, every day your heart beats true, I'm alive in the light and the glory, amazed by the sight of you, this love is everlasting, and you find a way to show me, every day. of freeway traffic in the hush of a sunset you get my attention I'm listening it's a private conversation you and I in a one vibration and oh it moves me it's so When I wrote the song every day, 
It was to illustrate how God's fingerprints show up in mundane, everyday things in our lives. So at any moment, we can see or feel or experience that affirms for us that the goodness of God, the unlimited goodness of God, surrounds us every day. And that is going to lead us into our affirmation, if we could all say it together. Every day, goodness finds me. My goodness is unlimited. Can we say that together again? Every day, goodness finds me. My good is unlimited. So again, we can look around and we can experience that unlimited goodness of God. So for example, right, we can stand outside with a cup of coffee in the morning and take in the beauty of the sunrise. Or we could be sitting in our cars in the middle of rush hour traffic and hear this song that lifts up our souls from the inside out. And we're sitting in there in this quiet of our car, and there's all this chaos, chaos around us, but all of a sudden we find ourselves dropping into this, this feeling of holiness. Or we could stand on the shore of the ocean and marvel at the power and the beauty of it. Or maybe we think that it, it comes to us in some vivid dream or in some answered prayer. Every day, your goodness finds me. And I think that I felt it and I believed it, but one of the things that I noticed when I was writing this song was that it's important for us to recognize it. All of this goodness can come to us, but we need to be the ones who recognize it, who make room for it, and allow it into our lives. And the reason why that's so important is because it shapes the way that we think and live. And the way that we think and live, right, influences how we are going to experience our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I wrote this first verse, tiny drops of water bouncing on my roof. We could take that slide down. Tiny drops of water bouncing on my roof. You send them to remind me one for every blessing on me. And all oh, they keep coming, overflowing. And you know, actually last night, I think for us and probably for you, that really kind of was illustrated for me because we had a rainstorm like you would not believe last night. And so when I thought about the two hour drive that we had coming up here from Colorado Springs, my attitude could have been markedly different. It could have been tiny drops of water pounding on my roof. That sound drives me insane and it will ruin all the plans that I have tomorrow. Every day. <laughs> right, but our perspective makes such a difference. It's the same rain, the same house, the same roof, the same universe, the same me. But my attitude will make such a difference in how I experience that day. So understanding the goodness of God is always around us and our willingness to keep our mind pointed toward that goodness really hit home for me one day when I was out in the mountains hiking and my mom called me. And normally I would not answer the phone, but it's, you know, it's your mom, so you have to answer the phone. And I'm so glad that I did because I could not have predicted the unbelievable life lesson that was about to unfold. And it unfolded in two different ways. In one way, it was in the story. And in another way, it was in the storyteller. And so I called this the parable of the Yorkies. And this is why. 
So a little bit of background. For the last 35 years, my mom has always had Yorkshire Terriers. Always two. And the only thing that ever changed about those two were their names, and I kid you not, the degree to which they smelled. <laughs> but if you saw a picture of my mom from the 80s with her dogs, you would think that my mom had aged and these same dogs were 35 years old. <laughs> so this current set is Muffin and Lucy. And Muffin is this little ball of joy. If you call him, his ears perk up, and he runs toward you, and he might take a break to scratch himself, or sniff something, or chase the cat, or, or whatever. You know, if you have dogs, you know kind of how that is. And I don't know what kind of thoughts dogs have, but I swear to you, Muffin does not have one negative thought. He's so excited, and he's so happy, and he's so in the moment. Lucy is skittish, and she's jealous of Muffin. And she will hoard her food and growl at Muffin while she's eating. And so what happens is whenever my mom wants to give them a snack, my mom has to give uh, Lucy's, uh, Lucy one first and just kind of keep Muffin away and then Muffin can come over and get his snack. So she, was, she rarely did anything herself. Whenever you would see Muffin, whenever you see Lucy, she was always on the lookout for what Muffin was doing. Is he getting something that I want? Is he getting attention that I'm not getting? That I'm not getting? And so one day, um, my mom was going to give them a snack. And of course, Muffin just sat there. He knew it was snack time. He knew that it was going to come to him. And so he just sat there and waited. Lucy got her snack and immediately got really um, just weird about it. So she started growling. And the next thing that my mom knew, Lucy had choked. And she died. And it was so, my mom was telling me this story, and the more that I thought about their personalities, the more it kind of actually didn't surprise me that that happened to Lucy. But what did surprise me was what my mom said next. And she said, here's the lesson that God showed me. You can die at any time. You never know when it's going to come, and so your soul should be ready. And I thought, I don't think that's the lesson at all. <laughs> what really came to me was the parable of the dogs. Lucy lived every single day of her life living in fear and lack. She was constantly afraid that whatever, she, whatever good was coming to her was going to be taken away at any moment. And she lived that way her whole life. In fact, she lived that way right up until she died, and that was the thing that actually killed her. And I said to my mom, you are, you know, you're the provider of everything for these two. Does it ever occur to you to give something to Muffin and not give it to Lucy? In their little universe, does Lucy ever have a reason to think that she's not going to get the good that's coming to her? And imagine the quality of her life. Every morning, she woke up running interference when she could have woken up and lived her life knowing that her good was coming to her, that there was enough for both her and Muffin. 
that there was never this situation that arose where Muffin was given something and she wasn't. Muffin lives every single day as if he knows he's blessed. And he's still living that, that way today. He is so abundant in snacks <laughs> that we call him Beryl. <laughs> he is still receiving and he's still happy and he is gonna live in that flow until his final day. It was two dogs, the same house, the same circumstances, but two different ways of being in the world that yielded two distinctly different qualities of life. And then what was really wild was after I pulled back a little bit, I thought, I saw that my mom and I had become kind of this Muffin and Lucy situation. And it was all around attitude. So my mom was focused on Lucy, and she saw Lucy's story as this warning, this admonition that at any moment you could run out of time, and you were gonna be subject to some final judgment, and you had to constantly be aware of whether you were keeping yourself in check. And what I got out of the story was Muffin's whole vibe on life. And I thought, gosh, you know, my good is specifically for me. It can't be transferred to somebody else. It's not gonna get used up. It's not gonna get taken away. What my good is mine, somebody else's is theirs. And so I don't need to look over my shoulder or live constantly wondering if somebody else is getting something that I want because mine is coming. The universe is abundant, right? It holds enough for everybody. And so I thought, gosh, well, I guess I don't really need to be um, focused on um, fear that my life or my opportunities or my sense of well-being could be limited or taken away. And so I'm not going, going to hoard myself emotionally or socially not being willing to give any of that out because if I give it out or I help, then I've used up some of the good in my life. All of that restriction, right, would choke me, would choke the goodness in my life, would choke the experience of my life. And there it was, my mom and I, two people, the same scenario, the same story, the same opportunity to translate that story. But how differently did we step back to our lives after that phone call? We could pull up that slide. Psalm 145, 16 says, God, you open up your hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. And there is Christy with Muffin. Every day your goodness finds me. Every day your heart beats true. I'm alive in the light and the glory and amazed by the sight of you. This love is everlasting and you find a way to show me every day. God will find a million ways to remind us that we are loved and supported and abundant. It can be materially. It could be in the simplicity of raindrops that count out our blessings. It could be in the well-timed phone call 
from somebody to lift us up, and we really needed it. They didn't know it, but that blessing came to us. It could be reassurance or an affirmation. It can be in the wisdom of animals. The question is, are we willing to recognize it? Are we willing to make room for it? Are we willing to allow it to seep in and fill in all of those spaces where we might be a Lucy instead of a muffin? And so one of the things that I want to invite you to do is when you wake up in the morning, think about whether or not you've woken up as a muffin or a Lucy. When you see that sunrise out there, do you immediately go, yep, there's the sunrise. There is God celebrating my life once again, every single morning. That sun comes up, God's celebrating me. Or do you see that sunrise and you think about all of the irritating things that await you that day? Have, am I a muffin or a Lucy? And here's one more thing. You can actually be the source of goodness, right? It's not just all of these external things. You can be that thing that shows up as goodness in somebody else's life. Because every single one of us knows a Lucy. That Lucy might be in our family, that Lucy might be a coworker or a neighbor. We all know that person who wants to spend so much time sharing with us all the things that have gone wrong, all of the problems that they have, all of the reasons why these things aren't going to, to turn around. The way that you get to be the source of goodness is you could be the person that plants that seed in how to recognize goodness, recognizing it. And um, all of a sudden, I can't think. Making room for it and allowing it in their lives. And maybe it's not going to be something that they think about right at the time, but they will walk away from that going, huh, am I a muffin or a Lucy? Oh, my gosh, I think I'm a Lucy today. We are all sometimes Muffins and Lucy's. So let's say our affirmation one more time together. If we could bring that up. Every day, goodness finds me. My good is unlimited. And what we're going to do from here is I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. We're going to flow into our meditation. <laughs> 